Yes, in pathology, neoplasia chapter, this tumor markers, this topic, it has been asked about seven times in the annual exam. So, let us look at uh, tumor markers now. First of all, what is tumor you can explain? See, tumor or neoplasm is a mass of tissue formed as a result of abnormal, excessive, uncoordinated, autonomous, purposeless proliferation of cells even after cessation of stimulus for growth which caused it. So basically the words you have to remember are it is autonomous, it grows by itself, it is a purposeless thing, it is abnormal, this word will give you a lot of marks, it is abnormal, excessive, uncoordinated, autonomous, purposeless proliferation, okay, this is a tumour, tumour is going to also stand for a new class for you. So both the definitions are going to be same, that is good. Now coming to tumour you, or neoplasm, you can have two types, benign or malignant, but that is uh, another thing. Now, if you want to detect neoplasm or you want to detect a tumor, how will you diagnose? Now, okay, look at here. Okay, look here. See, basically, if you want to diagnose, I am giving you uh, an introduction to this video. Okay, what is the video name? Tumor marker. Tumor marker actually comes here. You see here, it is one of the way of diagnosing a tumor. So, the priority is not tumor marker. You should know histology is there. Then cytology is there, histochemistry is there, cytochemistry is there, immunohistochemistry is there, electron microscopy is there, then comes tumor marker. Then you have a lot of other aids nowadays which have come like flow cytometry, you must have heard of it a lot, right? Very costly technique. Then in situ hybridization, image analyzer, molecular diagnosis, DNA microarray, lot of things are there. So is this introduction clear to you for tumor marker? Basically what is tumor? Now you want to Diagnose tumor in that where exactly tumor marker stands. Tumor marker is here. Okay. Now coming to details about tumor marker. See tumor marker you can also call it as biochemical assay. Biochemical assay or assay. Now tumor marker or biochemical assay basically uh, it is a diagnostic tool for Tumor, tumors or neoplasms. But unfortunately, what they say here, it is not diagnostic, only for prognosis and therapeutic purposes you can use. Okay. So, these are actually, uh, see what happens, some uh, tumor cells, they produce these kind of products. Okay. Tumor cells, they produce these kind of products. However, these products can also be produced by normal cells. These products can also be produced by normal cells. Hence, this, these tumor markers are only for prognosis, etc. They will be used as an adjunct. In addition to all these pathologic diagnosis, you can use tumor markers in adjunct. You cannot solely depend on tumor markers. You cannot solely depend on tumor markers. Wake up, I am telling you. You cannot solely depend on tumor markers for diagnosis. Okay. So, look at this. Here I am currently, you will use it as an adjunct to pathologic diagnosis and you can use it for prognosis to know if the levels are coming down etc. So it is for therapeutic purpose you can use. Based on these levels of tumor markers, you can sometimes say whether it is benign or malignant and some of these markers can be present in many types of tumors. Okay. So, these are the things, the problems with tumor markers. They can only be used as an adjunct to pathologic diagnosis. They can be used for prognosis. They can be used to distinguish whether it is benign or malignant based on the levels. Another problem is many tumor markers can come out of many types of cancers and also normal body cells, correct? Okay. As of now, around 50 tumor markers are there, fine. And the list will keep growing, don't worry. Now here I am moving on to this portion of the screen, please focus here. Tumor markers can actually be cell surface antigens, they, they can be enzymes, they can be hormones, they can be proteins, okay. So basically you need to remember these four groups, so it will help you to group them in exam, okay. In the textbook also they have grouped it like the cell surface antigens or oncofetal antigens. Then you have enzymes or isoenzymes, we are calling it as hormones and proteins, okay. See, this is the first part I am going to, oncofetal antigen. 
fine under that you have two but first of all what is oncofetal antigen oncofetal antigens are typically they are present only in fetal development okay if they are found in adults then there is something wrong so oncofetal antigens are present in fetal development present only during fetal development in adults if it is found there is something wrong okay there are two examples alpha fetoprotein afp and carcinoembryonic antigen cea carcino embryonic antigen which are the two afp alpha fetoprotein and carcinoembryonic antigen now where and all do you find afp i have put a diagram here you can see this AFP will be in liver carcinoma that is hepatocellular carcinoma and testis in testis particularly in testis uh, you can put it as AFP that is alpha fetoprotein these two example for AFP you can see it in liver hepatocellular carcinoma and carcinoma or, and the tumor of testis now coming to CEA that is carcino embryonic antigen what is ca close your eyes and say carcino embryonic antigen correct it's an antigen okay the first one has a p protein however this they have put antigen okay now where and all you will see it see this diagram colorectal cancer cancer of bowel pancreatic cancer also you can see ca ca is there in many types of cancer i'm giving you two examples here you can also detect relapse of cancer that is also another thing prognostic right good you are done with one uh, marker already one type of marker oncofetal genes you are fine uh, oncofetal antigen sorry you are done what were the two alpha fetoprotein carcinoembryonic antigen very good and these diagrams will help you remember liver testis bowel pancreas okay moving on to enzymes okay enzymes you will uh, you have uh, three examples given here see for prostate i have put a diagram of prostate here you can see prostate will have prostate acid phosphatase okay as the tumor marker pap pap comes from prostate prostate acid phosphatase Phos prostate acid phosphatase then you have neuroblastoma will give you neuron specific enolase in se neuron specific enolase then evings uh, sarcoma that is you will have lactic dehydrogenase that is even sarcoma is actually malignant tumor of bone okay so in that you'll have ldh so i have just put three diagrams here for you prostatic carcinoma will have pap that is prostate acid phosphatase what is this prostate acid phosphatase there's one more i have put here we'll come to that enzyme is prosto prostate acid phosphatase then you have a neuroblastoma you will have neuron specific enolase what you'll have neuron specific enolase very good n s e n s e neuron specific enolase then in ewing sarcoma you will have lactate dehydrogenase what you'll have lactate lactic dehydrogenase lactic dehydrogenase lactic so if these three are clear these three diagrams will help you remember prostate then you have neuroblastoma then you have ewing sarcoma three enzymes over now let us move on to hormones see hormones you have to remember mainly uh, human chorionic gonadotropin hcg is very important okay Hu human chorionic gonadotropin it will be there in trophoblastic tumor this is quite obvious right something to do with the embryo so it will be there in trophoblastic tumor and it can also be in the testis that's why in the testis diagram we have added two things afp and hcg <clears throat> what was afp alpha fetal protein and hcg is human chorionic gonadotropin which is a hormone okay then calcitonin in thyroid cancer that is medullary carcinoma of thyroid you will see calcitonin diagram added for you so that you won't forget remember mct medullary carcinoma medullary carcinoma calcitonin will be more medullary carcinoma of thyroid okay now let us move on to the fourth one in this ectopic hormone production i'm skipping the third one yes ectopic hormone production ectopic hormone production will happen in paraneoplastic syndromes pns paraneoplastic syndromes basically 
uh, there is some condition that syndrome that happens but it is not related to the neoplasm like there is we can't explain why uh, you know there's no direct relation to that but still it happens like in carcinoma small cell carcinoma of lung why cushing syndrome happens it's kind of strange right cushing syndrome is something related to the adrenal gland so yes so this is a paraneoplastic syndrome and here you can see ectopic hormone production after hormones we are moving on to the fourth one that is cancer associated protein we will continue this in the next video because this video is already heavy come back for the next one cancer associated protein revising in this video we saw oncofetal antigens that is afp and cea enzymes we saw that uh, that will be prostate acid phosphatase neuron specific enolase lactic dehydrogenase we saw then hormones we saw human chorionic gonadotrophin calcitonin and ectopic hormone production the last one we want to cover is cancer associated proteins come back in the next video